Ladies and gentlemen of the press, uh, we call you this afternoon because you've been hired by Mr. C. Moses, C. Moses to represent his legal interests in the ongoing disappearance and drowning, as drowning of some of his staff. And with the wave of public sentiment and the reactions of people and family members on the social media, on the radio and in the press, we being criminal defense lawyer, we thought that Mr. Moses come to make some clarification as to some of the allegations that have been made over the, especially at a time when the families of the missing individuals are in pain and in total disappointment for the disappearance of their children. He being the person behind or in the saga, we thought it necessary that he break silence, to provide some clarification, and also take this opportunity to plead to the family of the missing children. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the purpose of this meeting, to have Sir Moses explain to you. We will let them know what actually unfolded and what is happening. Especially, we got involved at a point where the Liberian National Police has cited him and the family members of the missing young men. But unfortunately, they didn't appear. I spoke to one or two of them, but they didn't appear yesterday. So we think he should make this clarification and also keep to that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council. Um, ladies and gentlemen of the press, thank you for coming. Uh, this is a very important issue now in our country involving me. Firstly, uh, let me register my profound regret, my profound sympathy for the incident that led to the disappearance by drowning as a stool told me of three energetic gentlemen who served as contractors to do a decent job at my mining site in Bar County. Uh, one of the three, Mr. Siafa, who was an electrician, was contracted to go and assemble a washing plant that had electric motors for operation, which he did successfully. Also, some four months ago, I purchased an ATV, a four wheeler motorbike from one Mr. Robert Blamo who have been a friend of mine and a worker of mine for quite some years. I purchased this ATV for the sole purpose of using it in the rocket terrains in the mining area. That ATV was also transported to the site, which when I went back to the camp, 
for the exercise of installing the worship plan to commence the work I will have the opportunity to use. Mr. Sefa did his work till Saturday, the, September, the, uh, the 17th of October, completed his job. Um, while he was carrying out the exercise of installing the plan, <coughs> I decided to test the ATV because I will definitely be using it. And I want to try the ATV. It started fine, but it couldn't go in gear. So I have problem with that. Immediately, I back upon calling Mr. Lava Blamo and had him acquainted with the problem that was on the bike, which he had sold to me. He said, oh, Moses, okay, where are you? And I told him I was behind Jungle Gene camp in Bonkari. He said, but well, I will send JR there. But how does he get there? I said, oh, but Mr. Blamo, I have a biker that I could send to pick JR up and bring him. So he said, okay, give my number to the biker in order for him to contact me and I will arrange how you pick JR up. His son. <clears throat> that was successful the following day, which was Saturday. JR arrived via bomb mine across the St. Paul River at the camp. JR within an hour while I was on the field, within an hour looking at the bike, he came back and said, oh, Papa Moses, I'm done. There was nothing much wrong with the bike except that you know, there's a conversion on the bike, so the speed that the bike should be idling upon before you change the gear, the speed is too high, that's why the gear will keep grinding before engaging. So I said, okay, after job, I will come and see it. After work, I returned to the camp, JR, everybody was there, the electrician had completed his work, we discussed, bidding, Jared tested the bike in my presence and showed me how to operate it, even with the gear having problem engaging. But I still have problem, I said, look, it's not supposed to be there, but however, I understood what he wanted me to know about it. He also received a portion of the wage that he should have gotten, even though I was not charged, but I decided to give him hundred dollars but I gave him fifty dollars and told him when you get to Monrovia go to the funeral home on Monday and receive another fifty. Upon paying the electrician Mr. Sefa, he had demanded that he had to return to Monrovia. The reason being Sunday which was the 18th was his mother inspiration so he had to leave when he embarked upon leaving, the biker said, well, I brought it, man, I have to go also. There's no need to sleep here. We paid him. When J.R. saw the two guys demanding to leave, J.R. himself decided that he must go, I mean, he must follow. I said, no, J.R., you take your own up. With me, he or me, he said, no, uh, uh, back home, I paid you, I get church service tomorrow. The public said no, I got to sell it. Let me go with you guys. Three of us can ride on the bike to return. As I'm telling you this, it was around 6.30 or so. From the seven. I pleaded that I was late. That they leave at that time. They demanded that they would go. That's how my partner arranged four of the local workers to escort them with the intention that the materials that they brought and could not take it across. When they get across, they will sleep over, then bring the material the following day to the camp. It was how J.R. Siafa 
the modern biker who is named Maurice Bobby left along with those four guys to go and cross over to come to Morovia. I felt relaxed. I went and lie down. Later that night, my partner came. After a heavy rainstorm for that matter, my partner came and awakened me. Moses, Moses, you have trouble. I said, What trouble? He said, The kilo carrying the contractors and the workers had capsized. I said, so What? He said, Yes, the kilo had capsized. According to information I have reached, the camp, which you have told me not to even tell you because of your heart condition, is that three persons are missing out of the six that were only keen on crossing. It was where they sat down again. I went into a state of confusion. For almost an hour, people were talking, you know, I just couldn't talk to myself for such a thing to happen so suddenly. So after I a little composed myself, I decided to disseminate the information to town. What happened? The first thing that came to me to be verifying my primary concern was Mr. Blamo. That was my first concern. Mr. Blamo, knowing what? His family himself are going through. Ah, this can be. So I said, well, what I will do now, I will call the funeral home, let them go and find his priest now. And I called, I asked them to go find the priest. And to a farm, he went there. From there, he was talking to for uh, Father Harris. I explained to him what had happened. And that you should please immediately go to the Blamos and have them informed. Which the following morning we did. The next morning, which was Sunday, we left the camp to get across through uh, Tolata into Kakata, then into Bombay, so that we will put together a rescue team to go on the water immediately. We got there, we had seen the, the three survivors from the campsites. We saw them with the police and we are back upon putting the natives together, talking to them to go over the water and see what had happened. This is what transpired to date. But as things will have it, all of a sudden, stories started to change. Threats started to come, which I least expected. Threats from all angles. So I remained in Kakata and was coordinating the rescue mission. As people will need this, I will have it sent to them. You know, to, to, to accelerate the process of seeing what had gone wrong. This was a pathetic situation. Up to present, I don't even believe myself that I'm in the middle of this thing. I don't believe it. I was that person at the water side. These guys asked that they wanted to come. I was that person there. I was only told that the king had have capsized and we lost these guys. I feel so terrible. Very terrible. Up to present. It. The pain that the family is going through is within me too. I wouldn't want to appeal to the public, the general public. What is said out there about me is not true. It is in no way those who even know me will attest that I am in no way associated with courtism ritualistic acts. I'm a businessman, a simple professional businessman. There's no way. 
can be feeling firstly to all of those who are angry thinking that I have intentionally caused the disappearance of these gallant gentlemen no I'm not a part of it my hand is in no way a part of it I have on many occasions through phone calls spoken with Mr. Blamo I'm open to working with the family for us to get to the bottom of this thing but this is unbelievable. it's unbelievable but every time I advance there are threats myself will shield myself okay so I'm coming through this medium to tell the entire citizenry of this country the world at large that most of these information on Facebook are fallacies meant to destroy me I'm not that person I deeply, deeply regret the situation and my heart goes out to the family the, the, the three families of these big missing gentlemen that I am with them all the way I am prepared to do anything possible to bring a closure to this issue by finding out the truth so those who are angry demonstrate please exercise restraint please don't just listen to what others will say out there and beat me negative yeah I am yeah I am please the families again please I am open to working with you anyway the police is vigorously investigating this issue and why I am coming out so late is simply because I have been advised by legal counsel, legal personnel that you cannot just go to public if an incident occurs there must at least be some signal pointing to what has happened fortunately almost about five days ago one remains was recovered okay even doing an advanced decomposition by our means was uncovered in the river so it gives the advantage now to establish that I can come and talk about what I know I'm keeping nobody's children nobody I'm overhearing that I've taken the children from under the water I was keeping them in the bush I removed them from the bush I'm not keeping them in the funeral home I, I pray that authorities will grant opportunity for the family to go along with officers to search all of them. I'm keeping them. Keep, keep it for what? For what? I'm not that person. I'm not a ritualist. I'm not a part of any cause. I'm not making any juju that will call for human blood. I'm not supporting any candidate to say they need him apart from me that I will fetch him apart. No. So please. Those who want to mend violence against me, please lower your anger. Please. I have not played any role in the disappearance of these good gentlemen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the press, I think you people listening to the most of the people that take and what two questions before we can close the interview. Okay. My name is Moses H. Arusio, Funeral Director in Moses Funeral Parlors and also CEO Oriental Mining. Okay, okay, so uh, my name is Augustine T. Tweed, uh, I write for the front page African newspaper. Uh, in your statement, you didn't mention about informing the police when the news hit you. Uh, so my question is, why, before carrying on your own investigation, you didn't inform the police? Secondly, how did the police got to know when the persons who even told you said were told not to, to tell you? So how did the police got on the scene before you got there to, to know that police were there? Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Before I even got to the apex of going to the scene, the police in bomb mine because the incident happened almost coming to the shore on the bomb mine side. Before we could get there, we had to pass hours around. 
Before we get to Bombay, the police are already had in their custody the three alleged survivors. The guy who was badly making with two other fellows. All right? So the police already had the information and they were on top of things when we got there in Bombay on Sunday. Sunday morning for that matter. Question is, uh, do you have any history of such incident? Can you recall any history? Because some of these things, drowning, drowning, or unfortunate situation like this. Never. Is, is this your first time, or do you have history of such? Never, never, ever, never. I never had any missing worker yeah. or drowning worker in two, three amounts. It was one time in Sino, one diver in Sino got drowned, okay, in the mining area, okay, which was recovered. You contracted the person? If I contracted? Yeah, in Sino. In Sino, he was working for me. He was working for me. He was a diver. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Fabian Pian. I work for LBS. My question has to do with the passionate plea that you just uh, sent out to the public. Uh, a fortnight of one a series of protests at North Timor home with family members and friends. Now you are sending out this passionate plea. How are you going to reconcile that with the family that was still here? Um, firstly, I am pleading that there are a lot of misinformation going out there. It is in no way helping the family. No way. Because most of the information are not true. But with the denying state of the family, with what has happened, they will grab onto anything of hope. And this year can even cause more sensation within the public the, the public sector. And may turn into violence and what that. But quite frankly, this is what I know transpired. Okay, okay. Well, following from my, from my end, um, what listing do you will say? Why Simosi is not making the clarification? I send it now. Almost two weeks now, right? Um, firstly, I had decided to come to the press. But within the first week, we are still not seeing any of the so the legal counsel attached to what can you say? There is no evidence of any kind of drowning. They were still trying to, to fetch out the canoe that was involved, which later the phone fragments of the canoe, but only the evidence of the body. So after the body surface about five days ago by the, the, the police, it was when my counsel decided to find a fit that I come to the public now and speak. But on one occasion, I spoke with uh, this uh, TV, um, so Ashra Gali, and Ashra, okay. So, it was after that time, my counsel said, listen, you cannot go on the air if there's nothing substantial about what had happened. Yeah, so, so, as we speak, uh, currently, uh, do you feel secure? Are you embarrassed by all of these? And I am very, very insecure, very insecure because of the false information out there against me. There are others who are burning with anger, thinking that these things are true, but they are not true. They are not true. I feel safe every day, even yesterday on 5050, Mr. Blama, when they're threatening my life, threatening my life. Openly. But all of these things I look at it as a means of expressing the anger with me. I hold nothing against them. Even the other families that are in deep anger, I hold nothing against them. I'm only pleading that we work together to get to the bottom of this thing. Now, uh, uh, someone listening to you will want to know exactly where was this body discovered? Or to be very frank, since the recovery team started, I never gone to the scene. 
when people started pointing fingers, I was told not to go to the scene, but let the people do their work. If they need anything, I should support the effort. But I should not go to the scene. So I was not there. I don't know the exact location. Okay, last day from my end. Uh, someone listening to you may, may, may wonder, uh, the, one of the missing, the rival you talk about has been working with you according to you many years now. Or uh, someone may wonder why is it that he issue he is issuing our short threat against you if he knows you are not that kind of person. Really I am pondering over that. Mr. Blammer and I have been very, very good friends of the present and fight not to not to bring back memories. But just to elaborate a little, when he last, his last kid that he lost, uh, Michael, little Michael, if you know that kid, I was the one he called. I was the one that even came and disembarked the remains from the vehicle. That's how close we were. And I almost stressed the night at my funeral. That's how close we were. The, 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 the son that is missing now, Jay Aaron, he's the head rider for my escort team. Have you so sure that boy is and was a species. And to the point that he also repairs the bikes. But let's forget about all these things. There is nothing, no reason I will be a part of anything against such person. Never. Okay, listen to me, I want to take you.